Okay. BSIC is secure. I'm going to check my oxygen tank, make sure that there's no damage, no dents, no dings, no any problems with it. I'm looking at it, it's green, that means it's oxygen. I'm going to look at these, uh, the stem here, it's got two holes here for the pin indexing system. I'm also going to check the date here for the hydrostatic test date. That's the te it's good within five years. Uh, they test this every five years for uh, problems with um, the tank itself. Next, I'm going to check the regulator. The regulator has a T-screw, it has a flow meter, it has a gauge and two high pressure valves. This here is a Christmas tree. Um, I'm going to look for the regulator gasket. All right, once I check all that, make sure everything is here, I'm gonna line up these two, these two pins with these two holes to make sure that the regulator is seated properly and the gasket's engaged. All right, I'm going to open up the tank, check the gauge to make sure that it is full at 2,000 or in the green, and if, it's, if I hear any noises, that means that the, uh, the regulator is not seated properly. In this case, it's seated properly. I'm going to set it down. The first thing I'm going to do is go with a low flow oxygen device for my patient. The first thing we do with this is attach it to the tank, turn it to one uh, to six liters per minute for the nasal cannula. This is the low flow oxygen device. It can be between one and six liters per minute. I'm going to make sure that these uh, uh, ports are in the right direction with the the flat part towards his lip. I'm going to place it around his ears. I'm going to tighten it up and tell the patient to breathe through his nose normally. He should be receiving between 24 and 44% of oxygen concentration. The instructor tells me that I need to go to a higher concentration of oxygen. I'm going to remove the nasal cannula, set it off to the side, attach my non rebreather, set it up to uh, between 10 and 15 liters per minute. All right. Once I have it flowing, I'm going to place my gloved finger on the valve and inflate this bag. Once the bag is inflated, I'm going to place it right on top of the patient's face and then cinch down the, <clears throat> the straps, make sure that the, the nose is cupped. I'm going to tell the patient to breathe normally. This gives up to 90% of oxygen concentration. If the patient goes unresponsive or starts breathing less than eight, or more than 28 times per minute, I'm gonna to have to go to a BVM. Now, <clears throat> if that happens, the instructor tells me, all right, patient went unresponsive, I'm gonna attach the oxygen uh, to the BVM, set it at 15 liters per minute. This gets 15 liters per minute. I'm gonna select one of the Mary tools. This is an OPA. I'm gonna find the one that is uh, the right size by measuring from the edge of the lip to the earlobe. This one looks like it's good. I'm going to use my cross finger technique to open the airway by using my index finger on the top teeth, my thumb on the lower teeth, and I'm going to insert it at a 90 degree angle and rotate towards the feet. I'm going to use the BVM. This is the thumb part. I'm going to make a CE clamp and try to give good breaths. If I don't get a good seal, um, then I'm going to readjust the patient's head. If the patient has a gag reflex, I'm going to remove the OPA. And I'm going to select one of the NPAs. All right, the OPA stands for oral pharyngeal airway. The NPA stands for nasopharyngeal airway. Now I'm going to go into the right nair, so I'm going to measure from the nose to the earlobe. All right, I'm going to lube it up and I'm going to place the bevel towards the septum on the right nair, insert it all the way. All right, use my BVM, adjust the head and give enough breath so that I get good chest rise and fall. I hope that everybody has a wonderful day.